Uh, well, I, I think, um, I just want to say one thing. This is the 68th Venice Film Festival, and I am 68. So, and, and just to add to that weirdness, the opening film, the opening film at the festival was called The Ides of March, and that's my birthday. <laughs> so, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, well, at, at, at my age, you know, uh, I, having made as many movies as I have, not as many as Woody Allen, mind you, but still, um, I, I, I believe I have changed just in my understanding of my own version of cinema and how, how much footage I have to shoot, how I edit. I, I'm, I don't shoot a lot now, and I, don't, I edit very quickly. Um, and that's different from what I did when I first started out and was just exploring what cinema was. Uh, but in terms of changing, um, really, it's, there's a basic principle for me that's always been there, which is that I give the movie what it wants, you know? The movie tells you what it needs, and I give it that. I have sometimes had people say, are you going to Cronenbergize this? You know, meaning are you going to put some imprint on it that the people will know is yours or something. I've never thought that way and I never worked that way. You, you have to be very honest with your project. Once you decide to do the script of A Dangerous Method, then my devotion is completely to the script and to the characters and to the period. There's no thought in my mind of anything else, you know? So I, I just shoot the movie that that asks to be shot, basically. So Spider is different from History of Violence. Uh, all of the movies have their own, really, dem they make their own demands to make them work, and that's the way it feels to me. At, at this era in Vienna, there were maybe five to eight mail deliveries every day. It was like the internet before the internet. So if you wrote a letter in the morning, you expected by the afternoon to get a reply to that letter. So there are tons of letters uh, amongst all these characters. And in those letters, they quote each other. They say, when you said this and when I re replied that. So there's a lot of material out there uh, for which, the, which is the basis of, of the screenplay. And so I would say that given human reality, the, the, the script is very, very accurate, actually. Very accurate. It's not my first period piece because uh, I did uh, Naked Lunch, which was set in the 1950s and, and really required the costumes and research into William Burroughs and Allen Ginsberg and Jack Kerouac and so on, and we reproduced that era, Spider. really. Uh, Spider was also a period piece, and, uh, and actually, uh, and Butterfly also was a period piece. So for me, um, it, it's not unusual. You know, you, 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 you research a location, an era, the kind of costumes people wear. It's, it's, it's sort of not, it's exciting because you, it's a challenge, you know, but, uh, to, to give, because you can't just put people in the costumes and shoot at the locations and feel that you've, there's a magical thing that, that you have to try to catch. And it's, uh, it's very difficult to know if you've done it or not. And now people talking about Kira being the queen of, you know. There, there are some uh, actors who somehow cannot transpose themselves into a different time. They always seem like they're in this particular time and they don't work somehow in the past. Uh, I think that there is some truth in that, you know? Uh, whereas other actors can actually transform themselves into a, a, a mentality from another era. I mean, when you read what we, what we all read of that era, it is very different. I actually think people's brains were different in the past. You know, I think our brains have actually changed because of the technology, because of all kinds of things. So, for example, to do a movie about Alexander the Great, to do it properly, would be incredibly difficult because I think these people were like aliens to us. They were not human in the way that we understand ourselves. So uh, even going back 100 years, 120 years, was, is that challenge. The way people wore their clothes and what the clothes meant to them, which is always very important for an actor, whether it's modern or, or not, uh, uh, it, their nervous systems are different. 
So that, that's the challenge of doing something that's in the past. It's, as I say, it's not the first time I've done it, but it's, all, it's a fascinating puzzle. Once again, when you talk about research of the period, and you read a book like uh, the Stefan Zweig's World of Yesterday, which talks about Vienna in that era, when, and he lived in that era, and he knew Freud, and he knew everybody. Um, the, you, you, you understand that at the time, there was a concept that man was making great progress in, in culture, in education, in technology, and that the world was going along in a very wonderful way. This was the Austro-Hungarian Empire in the middle of Europe and that Europeans were very civilized and sophisticated, and that we were gradually evolving from animals into angels, and we would be, the, you know, the human beings were, were changing. And Freud, with psychoanalysis, said, this is not true. This is a very thin veneer of so-called civilization, and there are things underneath our, our conscious minds that, that rationality cannot solve all the problems of, of civilization, and that these things, this un, which he called the unconscious things, could erupt in a very disastrous way, and we should be aware of them. And of course, this was on the eve of the First World War, which of course ended the dream of progress and so-called European uh, civilization and, and, and so on. So um, that was an incredible breakthrough in the understanding of what a human being is and what the human condition is, especially for the time. But you can understand how disturbing it was for people who believed in this ideal of order and control and progress, you know? Um, and so uh, I think uh, psychoanalysis has evolved in many ways, but I can say that um, uh, I was speaking to a friend of mine who is a social psychologist, and he says that in the last 15 years, people have come back to Freud because um, when with MRI imaging, you know, the imaging of the brain, they have discovered what they, what they want to call non-consciousness as opposed to unconsciousness. There is a lot of activity in the brain, a lot of thought going on that is not accessible by our consciousness. In other words, Freud was absolutely right. It's like the theories of Einstein that have only now begun to be proved to be correct. So uh, I would say that uh, it's, a, as I say, a complex subject and Jung, Jungian analysis is, I, f I feel personally, that Jungian analysis is really went off into a religious direction, as Freud feared, uh, but I think it's, it's more about spirituality and religious realization if you're talking about Jung as opposed to Freud, who was a different thing. I'd like to just say that I think my cast has a great need of psychoanalysis. And uh, it was why I cast them, actually. It was to sort of introduce them gently to the idea that they needed help, <laughs> a lot of help. <laughs> and you can see they're much better people now. <laughs> Before, they were messes when I found them. They were neurotic, hopeless, hopeless. And now they smile. See, Michael, he never smiled before. Now we dress ourselves. Exactly. <laughs>